my name is Sidney Harper. Uh, I'm from Canada, and this is my second time in Mexico. Really happy to be here. Quite sad that I don't have time to visit Mexico City because I need to go back home by Friday. But I had a blast last time in Guadalajara, so glad to be here. So uh, I'm the senior technical evangelist at Mozilla. What does that mean? Basically, is uh, my job is to give love to developers. It's really to help developers being successful with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and Firefox OS. Let me know if I speak too fast. Let me know if there's something you don't understand. I have a translator with me. Exacto. Si no entienden cualquier cosa, igual les voy a decir ahorita como el resumen de lo que dijo. Si no entienden cualquier cosa, yo les puedo, les puedo aclarar más lo que está pasando, ¿sale? Entonces, por, por el momento, nos, nos acaba de decir que está triste, que no va a poder visitar México como quisiera. Y básicamente, él nos va, está aquí para ayudarnos precisamente con todo este tipo de desarrollo, tanto en HTML, JavaScript, en todas estas tecnologías que nos ayudan para Firefox OS. Entonces, si tienen alguna duda, por favor, levanten la mano, sin dudas, ¿va? Uh, just if they, if they raise their hand. Okay. Perfect. So, um, if you're on Twitter, so feel free to use at FR if you want to tweet. Even in Spanish, I'm going to use the translator after to you know what you said. Uh, I'm going to put the slides and also a recording of my presentation on outofcomfortzone.net. So, this is my personal blog. Everything is going to be there. So, if there's something you don't remember, something you didn't get, everything is going to be online. So, I'm really, really sorry. I hope it's good. I used to go translator. I really don't speak Spanish. It's so sad. I'm French. I speak French. This is my mother tongue. And I learned English a couple of years ago. So next is to learn Spanish because I'm really sad. I, it took me like 15 minutes to find a washroom because I was not able to ask to someone like what was the washroom in Spanish. Uh, same thing to find the editor, and so that would have helped me a lot if I would have been able to speak uh, Spanish. So sorry about that. I hope you can enjoy the conference even if I uh, to use English, but I think that was kind of the topic this week. We'll see English speaker, I think. So, today, I'm going to talk about mainly Firefox OS. I'm going to introduce Firefox OS to you. This is a new platform. This is available in Mexico. And how many of you are developers? working or actually studying to create application, uh, web application, mobile application? Some of you, yeah, okay. So what are you going to see, or even when you're working on your project, is that um, sometimes you have that question about, hey, I want to build that uh, really nice mobile application. Should I use HTML? Should I use web technology? Or should I go native? and use iOS or uh, Objective-C to create iOS application or use Java to create Android application. And when you can go on the uh, market, the job market, you're going to see that it's a question your customers will have quite often. Your manager, your boss, and oh, we need to create an application. Which technology should we use? Most of the time, the answer will be native application. And since HTML5 is there, it's that kind of sumo fight, I think, It's really okay, you don't know what technology I'm going to use, and most of the time, as I said, that's going to be native application because it's faster, because you're going to have access to hardware, you're going to have access to things you don't have access to right now with HTML5. But that made me sad. That made me really sad because HTML5 is a really, really good technology. HTML is a good technology, but when HTML5 came, it was even better. We had new features, we had new things that people can use, that developers can use, so we can build great mobile application and web application. And it should be the answer, but sometimes, when we think about HTML5, when we think about HTML, it's kind of like, yeah, good technology, but it's not there yet. I prefer to create native application. I prefer to use Objective-C because, that's the, as I said, that's going to be faster. I'm going to have access to more functionality that I don't have access to with HTML5. And I agree. As much as I love web technology, as much as I love HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, sometimes going native is like the yes, answer. This is what you need to do. But as I said, it made me sad because I'm not a big fan of statistics. 
But when we see those kind of statistics, it's always about building devices, no matter if it's 38, 40, 50 building devices. This is always a lot of devices that will be connected to the internet. And when we think about those devices, like in that with those statistics, they say uh, 38 billion devices, that's going to be connected in the next six years. So th this is a lot of devices, but so think about how many devices you have right now. You may have your laptop connected to the internet, to Wi-Fi, you may have uh, mobile devices, a smartphone, you may have a gaming there there's a lot of devices connected out there. But if we remove what we call the internet of things, the objects that you don't really interact with. Have a photometer called Fitbit. I don't know if you have this here, but it's, it's just like telling me how many steps I do during the day and just trying to motivate me to move a little more instead of just always sitting in front of my computer. So I don't really interact with that device. But still, it's connected with Bluetooth on my phone and sending that over the internet. So those are the devices that are connected. But if we remove those kind of devices, we we'll still have a lot of devices connected to the internet that we interact with. And it's not just about the desktop. It's not just about the laptop. Think about your tablet. Think about what we call the tablet. Think about many devices like uh, the laptop that we have. Think about e-readers. Think about television, Xbox, PlayStation. They can all connect to the internet in different ways. And what's the common point of all those devices? It's the browser. With all of those devices, you can access the web with the browser. Sometimes it's not the best experience ever. As an example, I have a Kindle device to read my ebooks. There's a browser on it. I can go on the web. Yeah, not the best experience ever. But still, I can connect to the internet. I can access that on the browser on the web. So all those devices are there. And the common point, as I said, is the browser. So it's why you need to think about HTML. Because when you build native applications, it's only for one platform. If you build a iOS application, that's going to work only on iOS devices. If you build an Android application, that's going to work only on Android devices. So what I want to do today is introduce you how HTML5 will evolve. How HTML5 is evolving right now with a platform called Firefox OS. So I want to take that HTML5, that's your life, that's your main app life, that you may think that is the future or not, and make it something really amazing, something awesome, something that you will have access to feature functionalities that you really need to create good application. And not just saying, hey, when I use HTML, it's just to build application working in the browser on the desktop. No, you can use now HTML technology to build applications that can work on many, many devices. So what you deserve is a great platform. So let me introduce you uh, a little bit Firefox OS more on the uh, story side and some facts about Firefox OS before going more technical. So about three years ago, we decided that, hey, we need to create an OS using web technology. As Mozilla, we're a nonprofit organization. We're not there to make money. And the idea was to give access to the web to more people. Give access to the web to those people that are using feature phone. Create an OS that will work well, that won't use proper interior software, and that will have, give a really great experience to the users. So one year ago-ish, we launched the first Firefox OS device. What is great with those devices is that the OS is based in HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Everything you see on the phone that goes from the telephony application, to the browser, to the Facebook application, to the marketplace application. Everything is built with HTML, CSS, JavaScript. It's open source. How many of you like GitHub or using Git? Yeah. So you can go on GitHub right now. I see a lot of fun. Um, you can go on GitHub and you can find all the source of Firefox OS, of the visual part, Gaia of the OS. Everything is open source, everything is online. You can go there, you can have some features, you can fix some bugs. You can just see how it's working behind the hood. Because you want to be sure that you have a secure OS. You want to be you want to know what's behind the hood. So you can do this because it's open source. 
We launched in many countries in the first one year. So now our Fox OS devices are available in 26 countries. They're available a lot more uh, in many more countries when you buy devices on the web. But those are the devices you can buy locally to the shop. And it's the same thing in Mexico. We have two or three devices available in Mexico that you can buy to your local shop. It's strongly targeted for emerging market or low-end market. It does not mean that all those devices will only be for emerging market, but most of them, they are there to give an opportunity, give an alternative to people. At least in Canada, I'm from Canada, we're quite lucky. Uh, yes, sometimes we pay a lot for internet connection, but they're pretty fast. Uh, we have access to different phones, going from iPhone to Android, all those high-end devices, we have also those low-end devices. But the idea of the entire Fox OS was really to give access to phones that are really inexpensive, smartphones that are working great, that have application, and that gave really great experience to the users. So it's like it's strongly aimed at emerging market and low-end markets. On the other side, Mozilla is not creating any hardware. We only work on the OS. So we work with partners to be sure that there is phones out there. We work with partners to be sure that people will be able to buy those phones in different local shops. And there's more countries coming soon because it's, it's only the beginning. The, phone, the first phones, as I said, launched one year ago. So I think it's, it's a really good beginning. It's a really, really good update. So we have many devices out there, uh, depending, depending on the countries, depending on where you live, depending on devices you can buy online or not. But there's devices like the, like the Alcatel One Touch Fire, CD Open C. We also have the Wiley device, the LG, LG FireWeb. And we also have what we call the Flame device that you can buy online. So there's many devices out there, so it's not just about the one devices. There is many uh, OEMs that are working on those devices. As an example, you can buy the CD Open on the web. So it's on eBay. They're still new. It's not a huge file. It's just a new file. Uh, CD use eBay to sell those files. And uh, as an example, you can get those for uh, one hundred dollar. So should I say like one thousand pesos kind of ish? Yeah, so it's pretty inexpensive, it's really affordable, and you still have a great experience. It's not because it's a low-cost device that you don't have those kind of great experiences. Of course, you can compare those some to maybe the latest iPhone 5 that you brought for 1000 bucks. So it's not the same kind of hardware, but still, for $100, it's a really good device. You can also buy that device if you're a developer. Uh, you can go online to everybody.com, and this is one of the newest devices. We, uh, one of the newest devices we have. It's mostly for developers. Uh, users can buy those. It's a little more expensive, but it's a really, really strong phone. Uh, it's a more high-end device, and it's really interesting if you want to test certification or if you just want to use Firefox OS. So you can buy that phone no matter where you are in the world. So you can buy it from Mexico. It will ship for Mexico. It's a little bit, as I said, it's a little bit expensive, a little more expensive, but uh, you can buy it from everywhere. There's also something new that we launched a couple of days. I would say weeks ago, is uh, the NTX Cloud FX. It's a device that costs $33. So 330 pesos. So it's even more inexpensive than the one at 1,000 pesos because uh, it's still a smartphone. You still have access to application. Uh, we did a lot of great work to optimize those phones to be sure that it's going to work well. Of course, again, we're talking about a phone that you can get for $33. Right now, it's only available in India. So uh, it's launched in the Indian market a couple of days ago. But it's a really great device, and I really, uh, I'm pretty sure that we're going to see those devices elsewhere really soon. So when it comes to Firefox OS, and of the statistics, uh, we still have marketplace. So it's not because it's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. It's not because it's web technology that you don't have access to application. So uh, you can go to the marketplace, 
And you can download Facebook, you can download Twitter, you can download Connect uh, HU that gives you access to WhatsApp. So uh, we have every application, most of the application that people are looking uh, under the devices. So for a user, it's pretty good because you're going to have the same experience as any other devices. And for developers, it's good because you still have a way to promote your application. But all the process, all the marketplace, all the ecosystem is open. Like what Mozilla is used to is used to do. So you don't have to publish your application to the marketplace if you don't want to. But you can do it, and we highly suggest you do it because that's going to be the first place that user will look for your application. Because we use web technology, the web is the platform. Firefox OS is the only device that has the adaptive app search. So actually what's going to happen is that if you're looking for something specific, I don't know if you're a big fan of the YouTube uh, music group, so you go on the adaptive app search, you type YouTube, your phone experience will change. You're going to have access to applications that are never going to install on your phone because the web is the platform. You're going to have a direct access. So if I type YouTube or any that example, if I type soccer and I go and I click on Wikipedia, Wikipedia application, even if it's not installed on my phone, will open and it will already show the article about soccer. So a pretty good way to have more visibility to your web developers, and it's a really good feature. It's a unique feature that you don't see in your other phone, a good feature for a user. So what is a Firefox OS application? I'm still saying I use using the HTML says of JavaScript, but what's the that what does that mean? So basically, you have two types of applications you can create. You can create what we call the host application. So you basically put your Firefox OS application on your own server. You can use GitHub pages. You can put it everywhere you want. You're going to host yourself your application. So you're going to be responsible of having your code somewhere on some server. You can also create a package app. And this is probably what you're used to do if you're creating other uh, application, mobile application on other platform. This is basically a zip file containing images, JavaScript, CSS, HTML, some file, everything you need to run your application. In both cases, you can submit your application to the marketplace. When it comes to the hosted application, that's going to be like a link to your application. So your user will still be able to find your application in the marketplace. But when you're going to, when you're going to install, where you're going to use your application, that's going to use your server resources. With a package app, you're going to have to submit your application to the marketplace, depending on uh, the API that you're going to use. And we're going to host your application like any other marketplace. Things you need to know is that you don't have to pay us to be a developer for Firefox OS. On some other platforms, you have to pay a fee to be able to publish your application. It's not the case with Firefox OS. It's free. The only time we're going to take some fees is that if you sell your application, we're going to retain 20 percent ish depending on where you live because uh, we have what we call the uh, operator payment system. So uh, users that are going to buy your application will be able to they will be able to buy your application with our credit card. And they're going to be built on their uh, cell phone operator bills. So we're going to pay some fees because it costs us money to do this. But in any other cases, we're not taking money from you. To build your application, you can do what I call vanilla HTML5, or vanilla HTML, we use HTML5 so often. Uh, it's basically just HTML, plain HTML sets of JavaScript. You can use any libraries you want. Any JavaScript libraries you use, jQuery, Cambridge.js, name it, any libraries. If it's working in a browser, that should work in Firefox OS. So you can use those libraries. And you can use what makes, in my own opinion, Firefox OS really, really amazing. The API that we have on top of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to give you the access that you need uh, to build your application. So I'm going to talk more about those APIs right after. So right now, if you have an HTML, CSS, JavaScript application, it's working in a browser, the only thing you have to do is to have a manifest file. And this is basically a JSON file containing the information about your application. So the version number, uh, what is the name of your application, what is the launch path, so which file should uh, Firefox OS launch when you're going to launch your application. 
Uh, the desktop shown the icons because we want to submit your application to the marketplace. You're going to need some specific icons. Information about yourself, your team or your company, and uh, some permission if you need some permission in your application. Because it's not because it's using web technology that is not secure. So in that case, I'm asking the user permission to get a secure location. And the user will have to accept or deny my request when the application will use that feature. So this is basically what you have to do. You have an HTML application right now. You create a manifest file. It's a JSON file, simple text stuff. And you have a Firefox OS application. So let me show you how to do this quickly. Everybody's following right now? Yeah. Good. Yeah, you can do that. I think it's a better idea to have this in Spanish. Sorry, do you want me to do a real time translate? Oh, I think it's good. Okay. Unless people want it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run uh, an application I have on my desktop. Uh, how many of you know uh, the project to do MVC? It's, uh, it's a project on GitHub, and uh, this is a simple to-do list. Let me start this in my browser. This is a simple to-do list, and basically um, this is a project that some people at Google and other companies started because uh, if you're a web developer, you probably know that there is a lot of libraries out there. Sometimes too much, like there is new libraries every week, like maybe every day. So uh, it, it's a little bit crazy. It's not always easy to follow up with all those libraries, but you still want to learn them. You still want to know uh, how you can use them and if it makes sense to use them for different projects. So Doodoo MVC is a project you can go on GitHub. And what it did, they replicate the same to-do list application using different frameworks. So after this, it's easy to compare those frameworks, easy to compare those libraries by using that project. So what I did, I just uh, copy and paste the code for the one using Ember.js. And as you can see, it's a little uh, to-do list. So I can have task and keynote on Firefox OS. And I say, okay, keynote, uh, I'm already in Mexico CT. I don't want to do my keynote anymore. So this is just a simple to-do list. Working well, working in a browser. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to do that web application. I'm going to take that web application and create a Firefox OS application. So what I'm going to do, because I'm lazy, I have a folder on my desktop called Firefox OS Starter. This is a small project that I use quite often when I do demos, when I start a new Firefox OS application. And this is just a kind of a, a boilerplate or an empty or dummy project. So there is nothing there uh, empty if I can go to um, the Ember.js stuff here. So uh, it's, it's pretty empty. There is nothing in the index uh, file. It's not opening. Oh, it's there. So there is not a lot of things. Uh, oh, not Ember.js. Sorry. Firefox was started. There is nothing in the index, just loading empty JavaScript file, and I have some images, some icons, still CSS file, nothing is there, except the most important file, my manifest. So a really simple one, version, name of my application, some icons, I don't need any permission. As I said, this is just a server kit. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna paste uh, all the Ember.js project in that folder. What I could have done is just take Ember.js folder and create the manifest file, but I wanted to have a full experience with the icon and it's a lot more faster to do this. So what I just basically did is just had some icons and the manifest file. So right now, I already created the Firefox OS application. Is it amazing? No, because you don't see it, so you don't believe me. It's okay, it's okay. So what is great with Firefox OS is that no matter the uh, OS you're using, Linux, OS X, Windows, you have access to the tools. First, because it's HTML, CSS, JavaScript, you don't need specific IDE. You can use whatever makes sense for you. Notepad, Sublime, uh, Visual Studio, Eclipse, uh, TextMate, name it. Everything that gives you the opportunity to write text. You can even use Word if you want. I don't think so, but you can. <laughs> Don't do this. But um, actually, you can create applications with whatever you want. And you already have the tools because it's everything you need is in Firefox. 
So you have Firefox, the desktop browser, and I went to two web developers and I have something called the App Manager. So this is where I'm going to manage my application. To either push those applications on a real device, to either use a scene editor to test, to debug my application. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have my application that I just created. I'm going to have that application in my App Manager. What you can see right now is that I still have my manifest file here. This is the information. My application is there. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use a simulator to show you my application. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to push the application that I just created to my simulator. So actually, the simulators are not part of Firefox. You just need to download them, but there are free add-ons that you have to Firefox. So the links are there. You can download them. It's free. So I'm going to push update. The application will be installed on my phone, on my simulator server. So I'm going to start my application, and I still have my uh, to-do list. So uh, doing demo in Mexico, make friends in Mexico, and social guide. So uh, I still have my to-do list. The demo is almost done. So I'm going to click there. It's done, and I, as I said. It's the same application that I had in the browser, but now it's working in Firefox OS. This is the best application you ever saw? If you said yes, if you say yes, I'm just going off the stage and finish my presentation right now. So, of course, this is probably not the best application you ever saw on a platform, uh, on a mobile platform. What you need to keep in mind is that I told you that to create Firefox OS application, you just need to have a manifest file. And this is basically what I did. And in theory, I had a Firefox OS application. The only thing is that the experience was really, really not good. Because I had to scroll a lot, scroll back, zoom in, zoom out. It was not adapted for a mobile phone. So like any other application you're going to have to create, you're going to be sure, you're going to have to be sure that app, that application will, will render well on any smartphones. So in my case, what I should have done after having the uh, manifest file, I should have uh, maybe used responsive web design to be sure that the web application that I have will be will render well on different screen sizes. That was the first thing that I had to do. The other thing that I should have done is to be sure that my application should integrate a little more with Firefox OS. With some applications, you don't have to do this. Whatever type of application, maybe you want to have some specific feature. Maybe you want to connect a little more with the hardware. So I don't know, for a to-do list application, maybe I want to use the push notification API to be sure that if I have a to-do list that I a do like that, that I really need to do tomorrow at noon, my phone will, will remember me that's going to happen. So, of course, as I said, you need to have the manifest slide. And I would lie if I would say that it's the only step. Just to, as a remember, you need to be sure that your application will render well on the phone because it's probably an application that was working in the browser. And you need to be sure that you want to give a great experience to the user. So maybe you want to integrate a little more in the platform. So that was the basic stuff. Now, when it comes to Firefox OS, I told you, HTML5 is a great technology, but maybe there are some things that are missing. Some APIs that you would like to have to create your application to do a better integration with the platform. So we have something called the Web APIs. So those are APIs that uh, we have on top of HTML, CSS, JavaScript to be sure that you're going to be able to access to some hardware functionalities. So I quickly introduce you to three levels of API that we have. So the first one is the regular API. So those right now, those APIs are working for Firefox OS. For those of you that know Mozilla, her goal is not to make proprietary API. Her goal is not to make those APIs so they only work on Firefox OS. Right now, this is a hard decision that we have to uh, take because we wanted to create those APIs to give a great experience. But we are working with the standard body, we are working with the W3C that are uh, managing the standard around HTML to be sure that those APIs will be part of the standards. 
So what are browsers vendors? Are there people using web technology will be able to use those APIs? And if at some point the standard change and there's a new implementation, we're going to change Firefox OS to be sure that Firefox OS will not be just about Firefox OS, but will be about web standard. So when it's come to regular API, we have different API. Alarm API, MBN Light Sensor, or Cheap API, I don't know about many details. Post API, screen orientation, web activities. There is many APIs there for you. And what is great is that because they're regular API, you can use those APIs in package app. You can also use those APIs in hosted application. So either one you're building, you can use those applications. We don't have to verify or certify the application because you're not using things that could harm uh, the device of the user that could do some silly tricks with those APIs. Let me show you the MDN Light Sensor. Right now, with HTML, if you want to access the MDN Light Sensor, and you know those, those things that also look like a camera on top of your phone, you're detecting the light uh, around the phone. So that could be useful if you're, as an example, you're building a kind of reader or RSS feed application, and your background is maybe it's white on like black text with a white background. It's working well on the big. But if I want to read this when I'm in my bed with the light closed, it's a little hard for the eyes. So maybe I want to detect the light around my phones. And if it's really low, I may want to automatically change the background to something more, uh, less harmful, like a black background. So right now, it's not something I can do with HTML. It's something I can do with native application on another platform. But by using the MDN license or API, with one, link, one line of JavaScript, or actually two lines, I'm going to have an event listener on device line. And in that case, that's going to call my nodeless function and going to say, hey, I'm going to get the value of even. So I'm going to say even the value. That's going to give me a value in box. And that's going to go from zero, like there is really no light, probably it's in your pocket, to uh, 10,000 of value. And 10,000 is like, oh my god, I'm going to be blind soon. It's too much light. So by using those values, in that case, I'm just showing the values in the console, but I would be able to do something more complex. So let me show you how it's working. So what is great also is that you don't really need a real device to uh, build Firefox OS application. You can use the simulator, but in some cases, like with the MDN light sensor, I don't have the choice to use a real device. So what I'm going to do, I have a real Firefox OS phone here. It's connected to my computer. I'm going to use an application to show you what's on my screen. This application is called Droid Ad Screen. Uh, what you're going to see is a really slow refreshing rate. It's not Firefox OS, it's the application, it's made in Java, and I don't know why the refresh rate is really slow. But still, if you find it slow, keep in mind, it's not Firefox OS. I have real device, you can test those after. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use another application available on GitHub. It's called the Firefox OS uh, boilerplate application. I go in my folder here. It's an application that my colleague Robert Nyman created, and we are all contributing to make it sure that it's going to be a full uh, fledged application. And actually, it's a, it's a boilerplate, not in the sense of a starter kit. It's mostly an application that had any web API, any Firefox OS functionality to it. So it's easy, it's easier as a developer to take that application, see some working example, and be able to pinpoint in the code which code is used to uh, create uh, those functionalities. So sometimes it's great to see documentation online. Uh, if you're like me, you'd like to see a real example of how it's working, what that's going to do on the phone. And by using Firefox as a well, full play app, uh, it's, a good, it's a good application to do so. So it's available on GitHub. Uh, feel free to use it. Feel free to help us if there's anything missing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to Disconnect this. I'm going to connect to my phone. So I have an option here right now. It's not just a simulator because my phone is connected. I can connect to, they call it full key on. So I'm going to connect to my phone. I have my phone. Oh. I put cancel. 
I'm going to click OK to give access to uh, the app manager to my phone. So now it's connected, and I'm going to do the same. Oh, I'm on my phone. I'm always trying to move things on my screen. So I'm going to publish, uh, push my application to my phone by clicking Update. The same thing I did with the simulator. So my Firefox OS ball plate will be installed on my phone. I'm going to run that application. And as you can see, it's not the most sexiest application you ever saw. But this is a great application to see a lot of functionality that are part of those web API and to test those to be sure they are working. So I'm going to go to Ambient Light. And what you're going to see, when I'm going to zoom because it's pretty small, you're going to see at some point the Ambient Light. Maybe it's because there is no... Oh, okay. That's fine. I don't have a lot of light near here, so you're going to see if I put the phone near my screen, you're going to see the value change to 94 lux, so it's, pretty, it's still pretty low. If I put my hand on the phone, I'm going to go to zero lux. So again, by using JavaScript, I was able to do this. So it's pretty cool. If I go into Firefox OS application to show you how it's done, the Firefox OS bar will play. Uh, I can go into JavaScript here, the web hat. If I'm looking for ambient light, you're going to see that it's only, look, there's a little more uh, line of code than in my example, but the idea here was that uh, actually what we did is that we did a query selector to get the button and all those things. But the idea is really having the uh, on click here. So it's like if I had an event listener on, on click for the ambient light button, and I'm going to say, hey, window on device light. Call this anonymous function, and again, go get some even the value, and that gave me my uh, value in logs. So this is the power of Web API, and there is a lot more you can do. It's not just about ambient light. It's really about all those APIs that I just shown you. So those are regular API, and maybe the ambient light example is the most exciting things you ever saw. But I really, I really like it because it's, it's visual. It's Related to the hardware on the phone, it's something you cannot do right now, but it's something actually it's not good. something you can do right now with Firefox OS. There's also the battery status API. This is another regular API. Right now, by using uh, HTML, you can have access to battery status. So, again, by using one line of code, so by doing the bigger the battery, I'm going to be able to have that battery object, and I'm going to be able to get the main information. Is my phone charging? Is my phone how much time before it's fully charged? Or how much time before it's fully disturbed? So I can have different little listener. That's going to be interesting. Maybe I'm creating a game and I want to be sure that. Hello? Okay. I want to be sure that if uh, the battery is running out, it is it's nearly dead, I want to be sure that I'm going to save the game. So it's a good API that I can use to be sure that my user of that, they might get one lose anything, one lose any effort that they put by clicking my name. So I can show you another example again on my phone. Still using the baller blade. I'm going to have the battery status check battery. And you can see now that my phone is fully charged, one of the persons, probably because it's connected since this morning, and my battery is charging. So if I would disconnect my phone right now, you wouldn't be able to see anything on the screen, but you would see on the phone that uh, the battery charging would be at no. So again, using JavaScript, I am able to use the battery status. And this one is a great example because it's something we worked on for Firefox OS. It's something that is uh, in the standard right now, it's still in the graph mode, but it's also something that you can use in the latest version of Chrome. So if you, zoom, if you, if you use Chrome Canary, you're going to be able to use the Battery Status API. And this is exactly what I said a couple of minutes ago. We are working to be sure that those APIs won't be only available in Firefox OS. Actually, her goal, my goal, is not to have you create Firefox OS application. I want you to create a web application that will be able to use those APIs, that will work on different devices. I don't want those applications to work only on Firefox OS, but right now it's the case because we created many APIs. We have some privileged APIs, like the browser API, the contact APIs, the 
device storage, TCP socket APIs. So what is different with those APIs? Is that you can only use those APIs on package app. You cannot use those APIs on hosted application. What does that mean? Is that you will have to submit your application to the marketplace, we will have to certify your application. We will look at the code, and we will be sure that you're not doing some evil things with those APIs. So this is a way to manage security when it comes to the APIs. So there is a browser API, and it's kind of meta because Firefox OS is working on web technology. It's working on top of Gecko, that is our engine running Firefox, that is an engine that is uh, that understands on the all that HTML CSS and JavaScript that render that code to create what you see when we use Firefox OS. Inside Firefox OS, there's still a browser, so you can use browser to go check any website. But there's also the browser API. So there is a lot of browsers when it comes to Firefox OS. But the API is pretty really interesting because if you're building an application that needs OAuth authentication, like Twitter, and I'm building a remember the application, I don't know if you use this, it's another to do list, maybe I have something to do list. But I need to, I don't want to have a username and password of the user. But I want to have access to your list. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create an iframe. And it's probably the only time that I'm really happy to use an iframe. And the magic keyword is going to have it's going to be the mouse browser there. So by using the mouse browser keyword, I'm going to be able to use browser API. So I'm going to be able to have a data listener to all those things. So what's going to happen in my example? The user opened my application. I ask them to, I point them to remember the milk website in my iframe. I ask the user to connect to this account. I'm not going to use any password. You just need to connect to this account. And you need to authorize me to access this data. So what's going to happen? Remember the milk will push me, will send me a link with a token. That will give me access to those data. So in my case, what I did, I used the mouse browser location change listener, and when the location change, I know that the member of the sent me back a URL with a token. I just need to take the parameter, take the token, and after this, I can access the member of the application of that user without knowing the username and password. So this is the same thing you're doing when you connect to a website and they ask you to have access to Facebook, to have access to Twitter, in reality, you give access to those platforms, but you never give your username and password. So if tomorrow you don't want to give access to that services to Facebook anymore, you just remove the access. You don't even have to change your username and password. There is a third level, the certified API level. There's a lot more API right there. But this one is a little bit is a little bit tricky. Because you cannot use those API right now. It's only for OEM, so people that build those phones or OS application. But it's still good to know that they're existing, because at some point they may move from certified to privileged, or from certified to uh, general API, to standard API. But there are some APIs like the camera API, network status, the setting APIs, and there's other ways that you can use those APIs. There is something that we call the web activities. So the web activities give you access to some part of the hardware that you would not have access because it's API, those APIs are part of the certified API. There's the browse, configure, dial, open, new mail, SMS, contact, the pick uh, web activities. You can use those web activities in hosted application, package, package application. So there is no security issue with those web activities. As an example, Probably the one we'll use the most if you build Firefox. So it's not efficient, it's the big activity. So in that case, I need a picture because my application needs a picture. Maybe I'm doing an Instagram ish application, or I just need a picture. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, okay, you must activity. The name of my activity is a big activity, and I want a JPEG. I want a JPEG. So what's going to happen when I'm going to wrote that JavaScript code? You're going to see the screen on the right. So the user will see that screen. You're going to have to choose either a wallpaper image, either an image already in the gallery, or use the camera to take a picture. At that point, you're going to receive that images. You're going to have to handle this. So I'm going to say, hey, on my activity, 
if it's successful, I'm going to use that image to do whatever I want. If it's not successful, it's probably because the user could cancel. So I don't have to know where that image comes from. I just need that image. So this is a way for us to be sure that having access to those part of the artwork, to those uh, pictures, is going to be secure. But at the same time, the user, the user will have to do an interaction to be sure to have access to those things. This is the same thing for the dial application. I don't want any application to be able to make phone calls for me. Like, no. So it's why we have that dial web activity. So again, the same thing I was thinking. I'm going to do new must activity. I'm going to say, hey, this time I want to do a dial. And I want to call that phone number. What's going to happen? The telephony application will open. The phone number will be there. But no phone call will be made. The user will have to push the green button or cancel. So again, I will save some steps for the user by doing this in my application. But I won't be able to do any phone call instead of my uh, user. My user will be able to do it. I'm also able to be an handler. So now I use those web activities. But I can, I can be the application that will process those activities. So in my case, remember the, uh, the uh, JSON file, the web config, the uh, configuration file was talking in the beginning. So this is really important because you're going to be able to put this in your JSON file and you're going to say, hey, if there is a big activity, request me either JPEG or PNG, PNG. I can know this. And if that's happening, if my application is too, so remember the screen where I used to pick active sheets, if you register your application as an application that can handle that big active sheets, your application will be listed in that uh, screen. So in that case, when your application is going to open, you're going to need to verify, hey, this my application has been open because of activities. If it's the case, if it's a big, so big activities, Yes, okay, I can send the picture. So there is a way for me to handle those activities. And what is great for developers is that if you do this, that means that your application may be used more often. By using those web activities right now, by creating Firefox, so that's not the case, we're still working on it. It's working right now, but it's still kind of like a bit of phase. Those Firefox OS applications you create will work on Android. The only thing you have, the only thing you need to know is that you need to have Firefox browser application install Android because Android does not understand all the code you created. So the Firefox browser on Android will understand those and they will work like any other application. So you build for one platform and that's going to work in the second platform. So another way to get way more visibility would be a HTML application. On top of that, that's going to work on the desktop browser. Windows, OS X, Linux, you will be able to use those, those Firefox OS applications in the browser. So really cool feature, we're still working on those, some of them are working, it's not preferred yet, but it's coming, so that means a lot more visibility for applications created for Firefox OS. So how to start? First, maybe why to start? You already have HTML application right now, you may have phone gap application, we have phone gap support, so you can publish Firefox OS application with your phone gap for protocol application. You already have an application working in a browser, HTML says it's or you want to create another one. So of course, we can create those applications. That's going to work on Firefox OS. You're going to reach a new market. You're going to reach people that don't use iOS. You're going to reach people that don't use Android. As I said, you're going to reach more people because those applications will work on Android, they will work on desktop. But there's also some monetization process behind it. It's not because it's a platform from Mozilla that you have to create your application only open source. You can have, you can have closed source, there is no issue. It's not because it's Mozilla that you have to get your application for free. You can sell your application. Actually, we don't force you to use any uh, selling system, any selling system services. You can use the services that make sense for you. As long as it's working in HTML, you can integrate this in your application. So you can sell your application, 
you can create a free application with apps, you can create a free application with in-app purchases. So there is a lot of ways for you to get some money, to reach a new audience, to reach new people. And what is great is that because Firefox OS is mostly for emerging market, uh, those devices are made to help people going from feature phone to smartphone. There is a really great opportunity for you to do this. So as I showed you, that should be magical. You should be able to take your HTML CSS application, have the manual sign, and it's working in Firefox OS. You may have to tweak the UI a little bit, you may have to tweak the experience a little bit, you may want to think about responsive web design, you may want to have a better integration in the platform, but still, it should not be that hard. As I told you, you can use many libraries you want, all the libraries you want. If it's working in Firefox in the browser, that should work in Firefox OS. As I told you, there is Corvo and PhoneGap support. So right now, today, with the latest version of both of those, you can publish a Firefox OS application also. Most of the APIs are created for Corvo and PhoneGap. We're still missing, I don't remember the number, but we're still missing some of them, but the most popular are already implemented in Corvo and in PhoneGap also. Those are the APIs that we have right now. And there's some new uh, also that I did not update, but uh, it's, it's going pretty well. I'm working closely with many developer one-to-one, many phone gap and protocol developers, and they all have an API set in me. So it's a good opportunity for you to start getting another platform with minimal efforts. We also have a program called the App for Flame, or Flame for App, I never remember. It's for anybody already having a mobile application. Mostly using front app, using HTML, or already a Firefox specification you're working on. So if you go to that link, it's case sensitive, all over case, jmp must link. There's a form there, you need to subscribe to that form, enter some information about your application, and because we have a limited number of phones to give, we can select some winners to give some phone. And after this, either myself or my colleague Jason, we're going to contact you, we're going to be there to help you to be sure that your application is going to work well on Firefox OS device. So that's not going to be that device, I should change the measures, that's going to be the new Flame device. So a really, really good device you want to have. As I said, you don't really need device to test your application, but it's always good to have a device to do so. I show you quickly, here's the app manager and the simulator. So it's really simple to start to create Firefox OS application to test those. There is also inside of Firefox, the Firefox web developer tools, a little bit like the same you see in Google, a little bit like Firebox, but it's not Firebox, it's inside Firefox. It's good for any web application you want to develop, but it's also really well integrated with Firefox OS. So I'm going to talk a little more about those in the workshop later, but just know that they're there, it's part of Firefox, it's integrated with the platform. If you're looking for any documentation about Firefox OS, but also about HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Firefox, Firefox Android, any library or stuff Mozilla is working on, any open source, uh, open standard stuff, when it's about the open web, and maybe I'm saying that because I'm working in Mozilla, but this is one of the best documentation online. It's an open wiki, so you can contribute to it. It's called NPM Mozilla Developer Network. All the information you need to build your application, to report your application, is there. There's also Stack Overflow. How many of you know Stack Overflow? So it's probably like the resources on my feet for around for technical for technical people for developers. So there's a pack Firefox OS, Firefox Dash OS. We are monitoring that pack. So if you have any question, any problem, any technical issue. Go to Stack Overflow, ask the question there. Of course, you can send me an email, but I would prefer you to use Stack Overflow for many reasons. We're trying to build a public FAQ, so if someone has not the same problem as you, they're going to find the answer. I'm going to be the only one looking for uh, those uh, forums. There's many people in Mozilla doing so, and other people that are not part of Mozilla that just know the answer that are there to tell. So if I'm on a plane traveling to another conference, and not able to answer your email, you may get a faster answer there. But if you're kind of shy, 
If you're not too sure about posting your things online, feel free to send me an email also, or feel free to ask your question on Stack Overflow and send me the link of your question after. So if I have time, in, uh, if I'm the faster one, I'm going to answer your question. I told you Firefox was a play application, the application I use to show people like, you know, of using web API as a logo on GitHub. Feel free to use it, feel free to try it, feel free to use it as a ball play to start an application. Uh, if you see a bug, if there's features missing, it's on GitHub, you know, it's working, do it, help us. So it's only the beginning. As I said, we launched the platform nearly one year ago. Uh, I'm really, really happy and excited about where we are right now, but it's only the beginning. That means that we're going to see more countries with Firefox OS. That means that we're going to see more devices. That means that we're going to see more features for users. So we're going to see more APIs for uh, the developers. Think about the Fender API, the web NFC. Right now, it's there, but it's only certified web USB. So you're going to have access at some point to those APIs. We are working on those. It's a big part of what Mozilla is doing today. Firefox OS is really one of the most important projects we are right now with Firefox. So next time, next time you're going to build a mobile application. Next time you're going to think about maybe using HTML for more than just desktop application. Think about HTML. Think about CSS. Think about JavaScript. The technologies are there. It's working well. If you do a good job as developers, they are really amazing technology. It can be as fast as any other native application. And on top of that, with everything I've shown you today, with those web APIs, with everything you can use in Firefox OS, you have everything you need to create great applications using HTML. You have everything you need to create great experiences for your users. So some resources. I want to keep that slide too long. Everything will be online. As I said, you only need to go to my blog. I will put the link again. I will put the slides online. Maybe not today, worst case, uh, tomorrow. Those slides will be online and the recording of the presentation. If you're planning to port or build a Firefox app, let me know. I want you to know. I want you to know what you're doing. I want you to know the great experience that you have. I want you to know what, what, what went wrong, what are missing, what you are doing wrong. I want you to know those things. I want you to know, I want you to know when your application is going to be in the marketplace. Because I want you to see your application in the marketplace. And most important, I want to be there to help you. It's part of my job. Even if, I, if it was not part of my job, I, I still love to help people. So let me know, send me an email, ping me on Twitter, ping me on Facebook, ping me on LinkedIn, name it. I'm usually there. If you understood what I said for the last one hour, <laughs> if you liked what I said for the last one hour, uh, please join us. I don't know if that's still going to be a little talk because we started a little bit late, but we're going to have a workshop kind of ish more hackathons because it's really short in time. We only have three hours. But that's going to be for developers who actually have an HTML application or a phone gap application or people that want to start a new application, come there, we have three hours, I'm going to do a small presentation, like 15 minutes about how to use the simulator and the app measure for people that learn out of the presentation, but also how to use the developer tools to be sure that you're going to be able to debug your application through Firefox OS application. And I'm going to have, I think I have 10 devices, 10, 10 flame devices, so those really cool devices for a developer that I showed you before. I have those devices, you're going to be able to test your application on those, and you're going to be able to keep them, not everybody, but I can have the uh, workshop, maybe after two hours and a half, for the last three minutes. I will ask some of you, some of you that wants to show what you did in the last two hours, some of you that just want to show your HTML application that you work with, even if it's not working in the simulator, even if it's not working in the browser, we only have two hours. Even if it's not that hard to create a Firefox application, you may need more than two hours because it's still new to the platform. And uh, if you show your application to the rest of the people in the room, I'm going to uh, draw those phones because I don't want to come back 
in Canada with those songs. I want to read those songs here and give uh, those songs to some developers that will publish those Firefox OS applications in the marketplace. So I have no idea where that's going to be, but it's probably going to be written on the board outside of the auditorium. So that's going to be at 11 o'clock. Join us. I'm going to have our uh, colleague from Zillow that's going to be here with me to help you and you have to go to and start to ask your questions in Spanish to other people on the team. So, <laughs> if you have any questions, anything around HTML, CSS, JavaScript, around Firefox OS, around Firefox, this is not, this is not my expertise, but I can uh, put you in contact with the right person. Feel free to send me an email. I'm an old guy, I'm still using emails. So uh, send me an email to frbird.mozilla.com. I'm a huge Twitter user. I like Twitter, maybe too much. Maybe it's not LT. But if you're on Twitter, feel free to follow me, feel free to send me uh, something on Twitter, some feedback about the presentation at frbird. If you like technical blog posts, hacks.mozilla.org. This is the blog that our technical evangelist team are managing. And uh, many engineer at Mozilla, many technical evangelists were posting technical blog posts around HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Firefox OS, Firefox for Android, Firefox, any libraries we're working on. And the last one, out of comfortzone.net, I have some blog posts sometimes in French, in French, sometimes in English, or most of the time, as I like to say, in Franklish, because English is not perfect. Uh, but as I said, if you have to remember one link out of comfort zone that man, uh, it's not more about my blog post than the fact that I will put the show slides and the recording of my talk after. So that's it. Thanks.